This is a good example to look at. x squared plus 10x plus 25 equals 0. We'll choose first solve by factoring. You might have spotted that it is a perfect square, and that would be great if you're spotting that. It's x plus 5 with another x plus 5. We're not going to go down that road that we were pursuing with completing the square and then solve by square roots. I'm just going to show what happens when we solve by factoring. We would factor it, and then we're going to split and solve. x plus 5 equals 0 in an identical equation. Another x plus 5 equals 0. So it is a rule that the highest degree that you have here, the highest exponent, it's a degree 2, that's it. that number, 2, is the same number as how many solutions we get. And we've seen two solutions all along. Here's an example where, is it really two solutions? Solve that one, we have our x equals negative 5. Solve this one, we get another x equals negative 5. Well, the solution, you could just write it once. There's no need to write it twice. But there is a need to really understand that we still have two solutions. It just gave us the same answer twice. That is significant. Now, what we're looking at with these particular videos are just solving quadratic equations. There's so much to know about quadratic expressions and quadratic equations, not just about solving them. So for solving, it might not seem like that big a deal. Hey, it's x equals negative 5. Sure, I see it twice, but there's, it's, it's only one number. But it is important to know that it, it did show up twice. You could call it a, a double root at some point. You might call it a double root or a repeated answer. It is just x equals negative 5, but understand that we're still seeing it twice. That is an expectation that I think you really should have. And if we took this equation and saw that it was a perfect square and said, let's rewrite it, x plus 5 squared, and then do square root both sides. It's going to get a little sketchy here. You might miss it. First of all, this is pretty funny looking. Positive or negative zero. There's only one kind of zero. So, positive or negative zero, not really sensical. It's just x plus 5 equals zero. So solving by square roots, that's where our two solutions turn into one. We would still want to know it's a quadratic, where quadratics give us two solutions because they have an x squared in there. But certain expressions, certain equations, an expression set equal to zero, could just take us to one solution. Moving right along to the next example, x squared equals 108. What I might prefer to do, because I see that I have that x squared all by itself and just a number on the other side, I can do square root property. Square root of each side. Give us a positive or a negative result. For right now, square root of 108. Radical and the square, square root, square, cancel. And, yeah, that's really at work. What number to the second power would equal 108? The square root of 108, of course. It could be positive or it could be negative because we came in with those radical symbols. So we have to account for both positive and negative answers. So that's it. We've got our x. It's not it. You, you're spotting. We should simplify. Just like fractions, we don't have to say, oh, solve this quadratic and please simplify any fractions. That's an unwritten rule. Same really with radicals. All radicals must be simplified. 108. What am I going to choose to do? I'll go for, go for the prime factors. I think I have an idea of what might be my biggest perfect square factor, but um, I like to see everything. So 108. It's even. I can divide by 2, get 54. Divide by 2 get 27. No more divide by 2. You're done. How about divide by 3? And another divide by 3. I've chosen to go for all prime factors. 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Last 3. When it's written in prime factors, 
If I see pairs, they come outside of the radical. I thought this was last chapter, right? No, well, still have to know about the radicals. So pair of twos out, pair of threes out, one three left inside the radical. Couldn't pair it up, must stay inside the radical. I like to bring down, I like to see this entire equation, what I have on the left side, right side, just bringing them down. X equals positive or negative 8 radical 3. We can leave it right there because the X is isolated. And that plus or minus symbol is an abbreviation. It means X equals positive 8 radical 3 or X equals negative. 8 radical 3. That's, that's a fine place to end it because the x is isolated. If you like to just be in the habit of coming right to both solutions, well, I'm fond of that habit. I do like to see both solutions. But at times, once I get here, I find myself just circling it and saying, that's, that's good enough. What does x equal? Two numbers, positive 8 radical 3 or negative 8 radical 3.